everyone, this is DWS Darius and welcome to another day in the fish room. So since my last video, there are some major changes. I moved a lot of fish around with the intent, you know, just to give these fish a better life. I had a lot of fish that was hiding and just fish that I thought would be better at different scenarios. So I did some moving around. Unfortunately, things didn't play out according to plan. I wanted to give you guys this video last week, but the fish weren't cooperating. So here we are today. The fish still aren't doing what I wanted them to do but I can still do an update. So before I start showing you what I did, first off, my favorite aquarium. I told you guys with all my tanks, my favorite always rotates. And currently, believe it or not, my favorite aquarium is this tank, my Convict Aquarium. Convicts are some of the most common Central and South American, well no, Central American cichlids. Um, super common, super cheap, but yet they definitely are so enjoyable. They look awesome. Um, they have a ton of personality and just very amazing fish to keep. Now, being that I was having so much fun with these convicts, being that it was so rewarding, I wanted to imitate it again, but on a much larger scale, and I created this setup right here. So this right here, as you all know, is my male red devil. Um, not looking the best before, if you're new to the channel, he used to live in this aquarium. He was the tank boss of this tank, but he was way too aggressive. He killed one of my fish, so I put him upstairs. Upstairs, he was always hiding, people asked about him, and this is like your first time seeing him since he's been out of this aquarium because upstairs he was always hiding. I'll bring him down here because I was just tired of him hiding. He is a very gorgeous fish, even though right now he's not looking his best. He still is an amazing fish. I grew him since he was, I bred him. I had his parents and the parents gave birth to him. So I had him all his life and he definitely deserves um, just the best setup. He deserves to be happy because when this fish is happy, I'm definitely happy as long as he's not killing anybody. So yeah, I started convicts, them breeding. I said, let me try it on a larger scale. So I have my male red devil and I put him in this aquarium with my female true red devil. Now, this guy is a, I call him a red devil, but he's actually a mid devil, a mix between a Midas and a red devil. His mother was a Midas, his father was a red devil. While this fish over here, this is a true pure breed red devil. She has certain signs or certain um, traits that you definitely only see with true red devils. She's kind of shy, kind of timid. At first she was actually doing well. She was swimming around. Um, and that's the reason why I didn't post this video last week because while she was swimming around, every time she came out, he attacked her. So my plan was to have them both in here. I knew at first they would have to do some meeting. So I had a divider. They were looking good when the divider was up. Both of them had the divider. The moment I took the divider down, created some hiding spots just in case things got terrible. And of course, this guy, he's just a jerk. He was being very terrible towards her, um, chasing her around, trying to bite her. And I've watched this tank for hours. She tries to come out. She tries to go over there and see what's happening because I think she knows what's supposed to happen. She's in a tank with the male. She knows breeding is supposed to be done. I'm not sure if he knows. I see he dug a little pit, but he's just has such an attitude issue. So yeah, I originally wanted this to be a nice big reveal. I wanted the two fish to be paired up. And you know, when you got a pair, it's just amazing because they want to defend their territory. So I would come in. Same thing that I'm getting down here. I could touch the glass and the male tries to defend it. Same thing with these fish. I think that depth, that would have looked awesome, but this guy is doing what he does best. He built a little fort. You can see he has the gravel piled up. Sometimes when I'm sitting down, I have my stool over here. Sometimes when I'm sitting down, he comes to the front and all you see is his forehead because he built this here fort. But yeah, he's over here in this little territory and um, he's doing what he does. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to allow it to stay as is. It's not really like the female is missing out on life because before in the other aquarium she was in, she was always hiding anyway. So I'm going to leave her in this tank for a little while. She has this hiding spot, this hiding spot, and a hiding spot back there. All of which the male red devil can get to her if she goes behind there. And um, yeah, just give her some time. Now until then, I wanted some activity because with her over here, with him over here, this tank definitely will be boring. So I put in some of these mosquito fish. Originally these guys were fish food. I were intending to feed them to my peacock bass, but now the peacock bass is big and these guys really won't do much when you eat them. So I just decided to toss them in here. I also have some now tilapia. You know, I got these big females over here. And in my other video, I was talking about feeder fish. If I breed these guys, I would get a ton of feeders. So I said, let me buy two more and maybe I'll end up with a male. So those three are females and I bought two more white tilapia. These are now um, blue tilapia, although they're not blue, but they are now blue tilapia. And this is like the same version only, well, the same type of fish, just the white version of it. I have two of them, extremely tiny. Um, one is back there on top of the pot. You may, there's a reflection, so you can't really see them, but I have two of them in there. And then I also have two experimental fish. But this is the other tilapia back there. You can see it. 
between a pot and a rock. And then I have two more fish that are experimental. Now you guys know I had a dovi, I bought a dovi a few months ago. I said if it's a female, no I said if it's a male it's going to go in my 210 as the main show fish. But I was a little scared because dovi do get huge and I don't know if my 210 could contain one for life. So I said if it's a female that's just going to be my lesson to never get a dovi again. And it looks like it is a female, I have it over here, it is hiding. So you may not be able to see it. Um, it's back there and yeah you can't see it. But um, it's looking like a female. And so I said, I'm not going to get a male, even though the males are the ones that have a lot of activity. But because that was my test, I said, if I get, I'm going to buy a juvenile, if it's a male, I keep it. If it's a female, I'll never get a male. That's my sign. So it's, it's a female. It's looking like a female. So instead, because I can't get a male dovi, I went and got what I believe might be the next best thing. And that is a dovi jaguar hybrid. I have two of these fish. And the thing is, the dovi will get too big for my 210 gallon aquarium in the long run. But these guys being mixed with Jaguars, Jaguars are a little bit smaller. So I'm thinking that it will do a little bit better in my 210 gallon aquarium. Right now I'm looking for them and I can't find any of them. There's two of them in this tank. And let me tell you, these fish are extremely aggressive. Now, hybrids in general, hybrid fish are some nasty fish. I've dealt with a lot of different hybrids and I know that something with mixing two fish, a lot of times you get the worst of both fish. Now we all know that the Dovi is said to be one of the most aggressive cichlids in the world. Same thing with the Jaguar. You mix both of them and you have some nasty crazy fish. Now normally I would try to avoid fish like this, but my goal is to get a single wet pet, one fish in my 210 gallon aquarium. And I believe this guy, well, can't find any of them, but hopefully I do have a male. And if it is a male, it'll go in my 210 as the solo fish. Now I can't find any of them. I might have some B-roll to show you guys, but yeah, so far they definitely are aggressive. They chase everything they see. They even killed a baby pleco, so they definitely are some crazy fish. Eventually, I, they're, look, they're chasing each other. That's them right there, so they're about one inch. But yeah, eventually I'm gonna have to separate them and just see what becomes of them. But yeah, they're in his tank, just uh, making it a little bit more interesting, being that the Red Devil is on his side and she's on her side. Now, they do come out every now and then. Like I said, the female, she likes to come and tries to look at the Red Devil, but then he chases her away. He comes out and sometimes he goes over there to check her out, um, just to attack her. So yeah, while they're trying to sort everything out, um, I have these little fish just entertaining me. And then you might have noticed that I have all these roots growing up here. Now, if you remember a little while back, I have plants that I'm trying to grow immersed. Now, they're all dried and crispy, but if you look carefully, I already have new growth. So pretty soon I'm going to have some nice immersed plants. And now, check out these plants. Now, it's been just a few weeks, and this here, what is this, Bacopa? Amazing growth. But yeah, that's, that's tank, and that's one of the different um, changes that I made. So the fish that used to be in this aquarium before the Red Devil came in here, um, some of them are in that 125 over there, and some of them are in my 210 gallon upstairs. I'm not going to go into that right now. What I am going to go into is um, this guy. So remember my peacock bass, my other cichlid Orinoco that was sold to me as a cichlid tamensis. I put him in this aquarium, and you can see he's back there. And if this fish comes out, this big guy is going to attack him. He's been his darker color ever since I added these two. This is the cichlid tamensis, and back there in the shadows, look at him. Back there in the set shadows is the smaller Cichla Orinoco, and this guy has become absolutely insane. Chase him around. He's been this darker color ever since they've been added to the aquarium. Now, the reason why I took this big guy out the tank was because he was being very aggressive, and I didn't want him to kill them, but this guy took over. He's grown significantly since this big guy has been out, and it's only been like a week and a half or so. And um, he's just insane. So yeah, I gotta make some changes to this tank once again. I know a way to calm this fish down. So, so far he's been attacking this fish like crazy and a small Orinoco can't come out. But there's one thing already in this aquarium that could calm this fish down.
So this peacock bass and most of the other fish are actually afraid of this here piece of driftwood. Whenever it flows to the top, um, they're all just extremely terrified. And I found this out just one day I came home, it was floating because these big fish knocked this wood around easily. It was floating and all the fish were in that corner huddled because they were just terrified of this piece of wood. I don't know, um, this peacock bass originally is from South America. Maybe he thinks it's a caiman or something, some predator. But this is the way to calm this fish down. He's afraid of the wood. So I'm gonna leave this here for a couple of days, maybe a few weeks, just so that this guy could calm down. I gotta get some of, some of these fish growing like this guy right here. This is the guy, um, nonstop harassment from this guy. Before he couldn't do this. He couldn't just be out and open because this guy would attack him. But now that I have the safety of this here wood, um, he should be good. Sadly, um, I did um, take away the home of my ghost knife. You can see he's back there. My ghost knife, loves, he loves this piece of wood, but um, he has other pieces that he can live behind until I just get some order in this aquarium. Now he still has this darker coloration, so I still have to watch. Normally when he's afraid, he turned back into his green color. Um, but yeah, these fish are just nuts. This guy is a big hypocrite. Before I felt bad, that's the reason why he's down here because I felt bad because he just kept attacking him. And the moment he's gone, this guy is twice as aggressive. So you're just gonna have to um, experiment. Look at the catfish. This guy is about a foot long. He grew out of nowhere. Um, but yeah, that's this aquarium. So far, this guy is doing well, eating well. He's been in the tank for about a week. Uh, look, he's still being a little bit aggressive. Once the wood is in there, see right now the wood is still um, wedged between this wood and this wall. But eventually when the wood comes out and starts to float around, um, it's definitely going to intimidate them. And I definitely should keep these big guys calm. Here's a better look at the ghost knife. This fish is um, very nocturnal, so you really get a good chance to look at him. He's about 13, 14 inches. Definitely a cool fish. But yeah, everyone, a lot of changes. Like I said, all in the effort to make these fish a little bit more comfortable. Fortunately, it didn't play out fully as I expected because um, these fish by nature are just very aggressive. But you know, it's just experimental. There is no right answer. Um, it's just try and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And I think that's gonna be it for today's video. Now, if you notice, I do have some plywood. Just got this today for my plywood aquarium. Now the plan is to still take my time. I have it, I have the glass, but I still was planning to take my time. So much so that um, I didn't put a date of the tank being filled with water and the fish being in it until summer. However, this being down here does take up a lot of space. So eventually when I do build the frame, it's probably just gonna take off quicker than I expected because it takes up a lot of space. I was just gonna have the wood down here and just collect everything over the next few months and then start building around summer because I could work more outside. But this thing, look how much space it takes up. And keep in mind, this tank is gonna be four by four by eight. So this is how tall the tank is gonna be. I'm gonna put it on cinder block, so it's gonna be about that high off the ground. But this is how tall the tank is going to be. This is how wide the tank is going to be. So it's definitely going to be a monster. Um, so yeah, thank everybody who's been subscribing to the channel. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.